Hello and welcome. I'm Jamie Kelly with RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group. Today I'm joined by Dr. Sun and we'll be discussing uh, epilepsy risk factors, signs and symptoms, and treatments. Um, welcome, Dr. Sun. Welcome to any of our attendees. If you're joining us on the live and you have a question, um, you can pop it in the chat and we will do our best to answer it for you. And if you're joining us on the replay, we're happy you're here. Um, I'm going to sort of just jump right in with the first question we have, Dr. Sun, um, and I hope this is an easy one. Um, just want to talk about what is epilepsy? Um, just a brief general uh, definition, description of it. Sure. Thank you, Jamie, for inviting me to participate on this webinar. So my name is Hai Sun, last name S-U-N. I'm a, a neurosurgeon primarily working at uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, but I also um, see patients at Jersey City Medical Center and also sometime at the uh, um, Cooperman Barnabas Medical Center as well. And uh, um, I'm a neurosurgeon who specialized in epilepsy surgery. And so I did a fellowship at Universal Washington um, for, for that specialty. And I work with epileptologists uh, primarily at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital to treat patients with uh, epilepsy. I also um, formed some partnership with uh, epileptologists in, uh, or neurologists in the community and uh, um, try to uh, provide surgical care for patients with epilepsy. So. Jamie, your first question is, what is epilepsy? That's an excellent question. So the epilepsy is uh, manifest as uh, abnormal brain activity. So that's a, a simple uh, uh, answer to that. Um, but there's, there are many different type of uh, um, epilepsy. So and the, there is a difference between epilepsy and seizure. So seizure is a uh, abnormal brain activity as well. Um, usually, it's uh, resulted from uh, neurons in the brain uh, firing in a very active manner, but abnormally. Mm -hmm. So when the seizure become re repetitive, meaning chronic, when some when a patient continue to have seizure repetitively that's what's uh, that that patient now have epilepsy so sometimes patient can have a seizure mm -hmm. for whatever reason and then stop having seizures then that patient does not have epilepsy someone with epilepsy is a, a patient that have, have repetitive seizures okay but, yeah we talked about there are many different type of epilepsy and uh this related to you know the uh, a lot of them depending on what causes the epilepsy mm -hmm. and uh, um, what parts of the brain that may be responsible for the or uh, the origin of seizure and so on and so forth. But uh, okay. the the simple answer to um, the, the question what what is epilepsy is that a patient with a repetitive Mm -hmm. seizure, which is abnormal firing of neurons in the brain. Excellent. And I think that's a good distinction because I know that there's um, you know, any number of reasons why a person might have a seizure, um, but they don't all equal, like you said, epilepsy. And you can um, you know, obviously speak to your, your physician and, and any specialist if that's happening um, to determine if it would be sort of, you know, like an isolated event. Um, or something reoccurring. Um, but I think that's uh, good to know too, because I think epilepsy sort of sounds um, a little scary. Sometimes you think it's going to happen all the time or regularly. Um, so it's good to know that if uh, someone does have a seizure, it doesn't automatically equal, you know, you've become an epileptic and, you know, you have to now manage these other, you know, symptoms and things like that. Um, so I, I thank you for that description. Um, and I know it's anytime we talk about uh, the brain or neurology, it's always sort of very complex because there's a lot going on. Um, so when we talk about specifically epilepsy, um, is there any particular risk factors or is it really individual to the person? 
there are certainly risk factors that mm -hmm. perhaps predispose someone to develop epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And uh, e epilepsy actually, or seizure as a um, uh, condition is actually mm -hmm. quite common among uh, the individuals. Um, some study has shown about 1% of the general population experience seizures at some point of their life. Oh, like we wow. said, yep, like, like we already talked about that, not everyone who had seizure would go on to develop epilepsy, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the seizure is usually um, a manifestation that the, the neurons, uh, like we said, is firing abnormally. So any kind of conditions that will um, make the neurons behave like that mm -hmm. or um, mostly irritation to the neurons so that they can be can become um, uh, active in an abnormal fashion is usually uh, a risk factor for epilepsy. So any kind of insult to the brain, for example, okay. traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. also infection, and also uh, abnormal uh, masses in the brain, such as a brain tumor. And also there are uh, um, genetic conditions that also can um, make the neuron more likely to go into abnormal hyperactivity, meaning like a abnormal high activity that mm -hmm. firing uh, abnormally that also can predispose someone uh, uh, either having seizures or eventually leading to having epilepsy. I see. Um, can you give an example of what um, that type of genetic condition might be? Yes. So uh, uh, as some of you may know that the, the how the neuron uh, works is actually is the uh, electrolyte uh, gradients that's being mm -hmm. maintained uh, across the membrane of the neurons. So when the neurons start firing, usually it's because the the shift of the either the uh, uh, electrolyte such mm -hmm. as the sodium or chloride or potassium that uh, cross the membrane of the uh, brain that then uh, the neuron receive either the information from another neuron says mm -hmm. now you can fire or if some changes within the neuron that say, now I need to start firing either mm -hmm. to perform brain function and so on and so forth. So those electrolytes are maintained by what we call ion channels that's on the membrane of the neurons. Mm -hmm. They are very important. So if you could imagine some of the uh, genetic conditions that makes those uh, iron channel uh, uh, function abnormally, then that can lead to abnormal behavior of those neurons. So, so there are a slew of genetic conditions and some of them uh, uh, produce epilepsy and also can also be associated with other um, conditions such mm -hmm. as decreased uh, intelligence or um, you know, abnormal uh, formations of certain type, certain area of the brain that makes them um, not be able to perform normal functions. So uh, the the genetic conditions that associate with the 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 electrolyte maintenance mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, neuronal uh, membranes that's a very common genetic uh, uh, traits that predispose patients having seizures. Okay. I did not realize epilepsy um, was as common in the population as it was. That's very interesting. Um, now, in terms of signs and symptoms, you know, if you were having something that you felt like might be a seizure, or is there um, another sign or symptom that goes along with epilepsy? I think of the type of uh, seizures that's probably um, perceived by general population mm -hmm. and also um, seem very scary is what we call tonic-clonic seizure. So those are the seizures where 
uh, the patient who is seizing lost consciousness mm -hmm. and start shaking uncontrollably in the limbs and may mm -hmm. even fall down. And um, and uh, uh, from time to time, you see this uh, in some patients, even in public. That's when mm -hmm. the patient uh, and also the 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 people around them, you know, become very alarmed. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's that's one very very when uh, patient when when we talk about seizures, a lot of uh, uh, people probably think that type of seizure. Mm -hmm. But there are some seizures who are much subtle than that. For example, there is a type of seizure um, more common in children. So it's called absan seizures. Mm -hmm. They actually uh, manifest just uh, at the short, brief period of a blank stare. And, oh. uh, doesn't necessarily have any motor component to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you will find the individual may be absent-minded for even a few seconds to mm -hmm. uh you know one or two minutes and uh so that could be a symptoms sometimes the the seizure can manifest as a difficulty with a certain uh normal brain functions such mm -hmm. as uh, motor function someone could not move their right leg or right hand mm -hmm. or if they couldn't speak for a short period of time so mm -hmm. those could be um, a, a sign of symptoms uh, actually relate to seizure, but they also can be sign of symptoms related to other brain conditions such mm -hmm. as stroke yes. or, or um, you know, uh, different, uh, um, you know, brain tumors and mm -hmm. things like that. So um, there is not a collection of uh, signs of symptoms that we definitely can make a diagnosis of mm -hmm. seizure or epilepsy, but they may be signs of symptoms, as I mentioned, suggestive of someone who may mm -hmm. have seizure or epilepsy. And if someone, I mean, I think obviously if you're having one of the seizures like you described at the beginning where, um, you know, you're not conscious and you're, you're on the ground and you're shaking, definitely um, probably going to go to the emergency room for that one. Um, but do you recommend that if you notice either in yourself or, you know, a family member or something, those other symptoms that they go to the emergency room or is that more follow up with your doctor afterwards? If the, the signs of symptoms uh, are not necessarily uh, impeding someone's ability to mm -hmm. you know, um, maintain a normal uh, function, meaning like they they are not it's not life threatening to them. Yes, yes. For example, like falling down, lose consciousness. In those cases, those people probably need needs to be evaluated emergently. Mm -hmm. But if you, for example, just notice that your arms seem to tingle uh repetitively from time to time, mm -hmm. or you had a little bit of trouble speaking from time to mm -hmm. time, and uh, or the, the your arm seems to be weak. But come mm -hmm. those, those are like I said. None of those symptoms are specific mm -hmm. to seizure or epilepsy. But you have those. You you probably need to discuss those mm -hmm. with your physicians. Um, since they, if they are not life threatening, I don't think you need to go to emergency room for okay. it. Okay. But uh, some of those symptoms probably suggest mm -hmm. the, the brain or part of the uh, it's either the central nervous system or peripheral nervous system may be having, uh, you know, uh, some findings that suggest mm -hmm. there is a cause for disease such as epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be important to discuss those symptoms to your doctors mm -hmm. and then you may begin find the cause for those. The 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 by doing those workup, you may need to a diagnosis of seizure mm -hmm. or epilepsy, but it may be something else entirely as well. So it's something to, if you notice it in yourself, sort of monitor, make a note. Um, and then when you follow up with your provider, you know, your um, primary care provider, you know, discuss what steps is it, you know, sending you to see a specialist perhaps, or things like that. Um, or sometimes they order uh, uh, imaging studies such mm -hmm. as 
CT scan or MRI of the brain to just make sure uh, nothing um, abnormal is going on inside the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a common workup for someone ha have symptoms that suggestive, you know, stroke or seizures mm -hmm. or the, some, the functions related to the brain or the spinal cord and so on and so forth. Yep. Excellent. Um, and I know you mentioned this briefly just at the beginning, some of the treatments you work with. Um, so if you'd like to discuss that in a little bit further in terms of surgical treatments or other types of new treatments available to patients with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if someone <clears throat> had been diagnosed with epilepsy, meaning recurrent seizures, mm -hmm. um, they, they need to be on medications that controls those symptoms. Um, because especially for the seizures that uh, where patients lose consciousness, mm -hmm. it, it could be life-threatening to them. And also in those situations, the patient probably won't be able to drive or mm -hmm. may, may not even be able to work safely. So it's important to control those symptoms. And usually the first line of treatment um, medications, including anti epileptic um, mm -hmm. drugs, AEDs, or anti-seizure drugs. And uh, those usually are prescribed by either your primary care physicians or neurologists mm -hmm. who treat patients with uh, epilepsy. But after that, and it will be important to find out what the cause for the epilepsy is. Uh, okay. As we mentioned, there are usually uh, uh, some uh, abnormal finding probably mm -hmm. in the brain that may be um, irritating the neurons in the brain so they are behaving abnormally. Mm -hmm. So it's important to find out what exactly the cause is so that um, those uh, causes can be eliminated mm -hmm. and maybe you won't need to take the medication again. Oh. And in terms of... Um uh surgical treatments is that for more advanced cases where medication alone is not helping that's correct okay. so first line of treatment for epilepsy is the uh, anti-seizure medications and uh two-thirds of patients with epilepsy actually do respond to the medications meaning that that's very positive uh, yeah after they have been placed on the medications they stop seizing mm -hmm. and, uh, um as long as they are uh, taking their medications, the mm -hmm. seizure doesn't occur. But approximately a third of the patient with epilepsy goes on to continue to have seizures despite being on anti-seizure medications, sometimes mm -hmm. multiple of them. So in those patients, um, uh, we usually begin to consider surgical options. Mm -hmm. And this uh, obviously will be related to what we believe the cause of the seizures. And not all the epilepsy can be treated surgically. Mm -hmm. But for the uh, epilepsy uh, conditions that can be treated surgically, surgical treatment action can be very effective. And uh, there have been studies for certain type of the epilepsy, mm -hmm. surgical treatment actually has been shown uh, much more effective in stopping seizures uh, comparing to medications alone. Oh, okay. That's excellent. Yes. That was all of the questions I had for us today. Was there anything else you wanted to mention about epilepsy or treatment? Yes. Um, I think one of the uh, um, uh, things we kind of touched upon is uh, epilepsy is actually quite common or the mm -hmm. seizures are quite common. But I think they, in, the, in our society, there is some uh, stigma uh, related mm -hmm. to patients with seizures. I think most of it is just our discomfort with mm -hmm. the condition, and, uh, which is uh, quite normal uh, reaction to if you see someone seizing mm -hmm. and uh, it is a scary um, 
scenario, you want to make sure the patient is safe and mm -hmm. uh, they get the care they they need. But I think um, because of the fear for the condition, mm -hmm. uh, so many patients with this condition felt like they may have to hide the condition because they don't want to um, make mm -hmm. other people uncomfortable. Um, so I think it's important to raise the awareness of the condition, mm -hmm. especially how common it is, and uh, um, make sure that people who suffer from uh, this condition mm -hmm. uh, don't have to feel shameful that they have this condition. It's a condition that, you know, not fault of them, themselves or, you know, mm -hmm. people around them. So we should be treating those uh, uh, individuals who, with dignity and uh, um, with uh, compassionate, mm -hmm. with, with empathy. So that's one thing I want to emphasize. Yes, I, I appreciate you bringing that up, especially because, I mean, I wasn't even aware of how common epilepsy uh, or seizures are in the population. Um, but I, I absolutely agree. I think that, you know, no matter your medical condition, um, people should feel comfortable being themselves and, and you know, discussing what they have going on, um, you know, if they want to, of course. Um, but it's certainly nothing that anybody should be made to feel um, embarrassed or uncomfortable about. That's right. And uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, patients affected by this condition mm -hmm. have limitations on how they can live. For example, many of them cannot drive and mm -hmm. some of them cannot work in uh, normal jobs because if they have uh, seizures unexpectedly, mm -hmm. it's hard for them to you know, perform those functions. And I think as a society, we also should uh, try to provide accommodation for those individuals. And so we, so their life can be lived to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, um, a lot of uh, patients um, affected by this condition want to live independently and want to contribute to the society, which I think it's, it's important that we recognize those mm -hmm. um, limitations and also provide accommodations so those individuals can max maximize their potentials. Absolutely. Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I, I just want to thank you again for taking the time to talk to us today about this condition, um, giving us a little bit more information. And I really think, um, you know, having a better understanding about conditions like this helps make it less scary if you or a family member, you know, have a symptom like this or get a diagnosis like this. Um, I think you said that the uh, the medication treatment was uh, two thirds of all patients respond really positively to it. Um, right. And I think that that's something to keep in mind if you're you or someone you know is is going through the process of possibly getting diagnosed with epilepsy. That's correct. And also, uh, I, I also want to um, emphasize that um, the surgical treatment yes. is a good option for the patients um, because uh, I think sometimes the having brain surgery can be scary to, mm -hmm. to yes. uh, patients and their families. So mm -hmm. they may um, shine away from uh, surgical options, mm -hmm. um, try to rely on medication as much as possible. But what we have found is among those one third of the patients mm -hmm. uh, who have tried multiple medications, the chance for a new medication to uh, make the seizure go away is actually very, very low. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So in those scenarios, I think the, the patient and the family and also their caretakers, mm -hmm. neurologists, epileptologists should uh, considered surgical treatment. And uh, the surgical treatment is a very comprehensive uh, uh, and also safe process. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to get rid of the seizures at the same time, preserve normal brain functions mm -hmm. for each individual. And uh, it, it's a uh, process, uh, many different type of a doctor participating in 
caring mm -hmm. for this one individual, including neurosurgeons and an epileptologists. We also have a neuropsychologist. Mm -hmm. We also have a, a imaging specialist, a neuroradiologist. So all of us put our heads together to consider what is the best and mm -hmm. the safest option for the patients. And the, is really like a team approach to to the surgeries. Absolutely. So in some because it's a, such a team effort also sometimes the access to this type of treatment can be limited because mm -hmm. you you may have to be at a major medical center such as Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital mm -hmm. or um you know um Cooperman, Barnabas, major medical mm -hmm. centers where all those specialties are available in order to get this type of treatment. But yeah. um, I think um, if a, a patient continues to have seizure uh, despite being on medications, you should try to seek this type of uh, mm -hmm. opportunities. And I think with advancement of uh, technology and also uh, awareness both among patients and also providers mm -hmm. and the type of uh, treatment has become more and more available and uh, um, more accessible to patients from all walk of life. Which is excellent to hear and I'm I'm like you said I'm I'm happy to hear that it's um, like this really holistic approach to the surgical treatment. Um, I think that too helps put people's minds at ease when it's, you know, like you're getting all of these opinions from all of these different specialties. Um, it's not just one person saying, I think this is the best idea. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And also we will involve the patient and of the course. patient in the decision yes. maker. We will only um, give you to, to undergo this, uh, the, the, the workup and diagnosis and mm -hmm. also explore those uh, treatment options mm -hmm. it, it's a way to give patient and family the best options they mm -hmm. have and sometimes you you will have multiple options mm -hmm. and uh, our job is to uh, present those options and uh, help patient and family choose so that so their life can be better well, I think that's a very positive note to end on. Um, so I just want to once again, thank you for joining us today and discussing this um, very important topic about epilepsy. Um, thank you for anyone joining us on the live or anyone who's joined us on the replay. Um, have a great afternoon, Dr. Sun. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate your uh, invitation. Of course, it was lovely to chat with you. Bye now. <laughs>